This week's entry on the enemies list is pretty goddamn simple. Once again, it's fucking Elon. Elon, listen, I get it. You really want to try to make a little stir with this whole horseshit Hunter Biden laptop story. I understand it. I would I'd probably want a distraction if I was you too. Because what you did this week and what you're doing in this broad sort of sense by reconfiguring Twitter as the alt-right playground again is pretty clear. You know, you have to take Kanye off because he tweets a swastika. But what you also did was reopen the door to Richard Spencer and Andrew Anglin and this entire horde of crypto and neo-Nazis who are back, who are jamming the channels of Twitter with anti-Semitism, with racial arson, and with the kind of hatred that you mistake for free speech. You're a corporate owner. You own a platform. Your platform has now become a place where the folks from 4chan and 8chan, which were these digital ghettos in which they were stuck, in which they could say what they wanted, do what they wanted, and and express the ridiculous and horrifying hatreds of anti-Semitism and Holocaust denial and everything else, opening the door for them in some way, I get it, you're surrounded by this tech bro mafia that has convinced you that you're the guardian of the First Amendment. Read the fucking Constitution, first off, bro, because... You're not. The First Amendment is about government restrictions on speech, broadly speaking. If you think that your investment in Twitter of your own money and the money of the Saudis, who will kill you with a bone saw if you don't pay them back, by the way, um, is was was put together in a way that that the greatest high greatest and highest use of that money was to put Andrew Anglin, the publisher of the Daily Stormer. America's most incendiary and revolting anti-Semitic publication back on your platform, and there's some social good from that? Dude, everyone knows the Nazis are bad. Everyone knows the Holocaust was real. Everyone knows anti-Semitism is a vile, hideous practice. So we don't need to see his words to understand what and who he is. I don't need to be a cannibal to know that, that eating human flesh is wrong. This is a simple analogy. I hope you can understand it. But as long as you continue to do this, you will continue to make the platform less and less viable. You will continue to make the platform more and more hateful. And frankly, you're going to squander the money that you have put into it. And you may not get it back. And there will be ripples. They will come out further and further. They will hit Tesla. They will hit SpaceX. And they will eventually hit you personally. Because this is the kind of thing where you can't be like cutesy, anti-Semitic adjacent. You can't be, oh, yeah, well, I'm empowering hate speech, but, you know, I, I oppose hate speech. That's not the purity test here. That's not how this works. So the fact that you've welcomed back uh, some of the most vile people uh, in this in this country and probably in the world when it comes to anti-Semitism onto the platform, the fact that they were banned not because they were conservative, they weren't banned. I, Andrew Anglin and Richard Spencer, they weren't banned because they were conservative and that somehow conservative speech doesn't have a platform. They were banned because they're fucking Nazis. They were banned because they say the Holocaust wasn't real. They were banned because the kind of language and rhetoric they use leads to things like the slaughter of Jews in this country and beyond. Elon, you are really working hard to be on my like all-time champ list on the enemies list. But uh, this is a longer one than usual, folks. But I felt I had to say it. And you know, I'm, I'm trying to speak to you directly, Elon, which I think is probably a, a ridiculous assertion on my part. Because you are clearly, like I said, listening to a bunch of tech bro assholes who have convinced you. And if you've been enraged, 